Hello guys, I'm back again on the Manhua Masterclass channel. This time we will continue the story of Han Sung Yoon, who was underestimated because he was weak. In the previous part, when he surrendered to his situation, a notification window appeared and invited him to the Tower of Trial. In that place, Sung Yoon chose the highest difficulty level. After he defeated the Sand Golem, he got the unique trait Necromancy. He grew stronger as he absorbed the souls of dead creatures or humans. When Sung Yoon reached the fourth floor, he was required to work with two other people to complete the mission. Sung Yoon was underestimated when he introduced himself that he was only a prospective hunter when on Earth. Sung Yoon made the two members silent when he slaughtered the goblins ferociously. What happened next on the fourth floor of the Tower of Trial? Did Sung Yoon successfully complete the mission? Without further ado, let's get started. The goblin's souls floated like a black mist surrounding Sung Yoon, absorbed one by one into his body, which automatically increased all the points and stats he had. Suddenly, a status window appeared before him, providing information that the field of view skill possessed by the goblin ranger was successfully taken. As his pupils dilated and moved quickly, he could feel his vision in the arena expand, like an eagle that could see its prey from the sky. That man smiled happily at the new skill he had acquired. After all the goblins were defeated, the three challengers regrouped, and due to Sung Yoon's outstanding contribution, he volunteered as the leader for the next battle. Neither Sung Hoon nor Haiyan could oppose the decision, even if they disagreed. Sung Yoon asks Haiyan to do her job just like before, as the healer behind them. The woman reacted happily to Sung Yoon's request. She immediately activated her skill to heal her two male companions before continuing their journey. They fought and pushed forward relentlessly. Every goblin creeping up on Sung Yoon would be slashed down mercilessly, and each goblin that died was where he gained additional strength by absorbing the souls of those who languished. They had no time to stop as time continued to count down after them. The three challengers came to a goblin settlement that somehow felt so gloomy. Even Hai Yun was astonished that the settlement looked uninhabited. Sung Yun stopped his steps momentarily as if he realized something, then ran full speed ahead. He made his two colleagues shudder in surprise and think there was a dangerous situation ahead that the two of them had not seen. How surprised they were when they saw the sight in front of them. Dozens of corpses of goblins were lying on the road in terrible conditions. Whoever had slaughtered them was like a deadly beast. Sung Yoon squatted to make sure. He pressed his hand on one of the corpses and felt the blood from their wounds was still warm. It indicated that the person who had carried out the massacre had not been there long. Sung Yoon felt a little anxious. If the other team preceded them to kill the tower boss this time, then his team would fail and be penalized with a painful death. On the other side of the arena, a group of goblins shouted and attacked recklessly towards a human who seemed to deliberately invite the monsters to approach by banging his shield with his sword and making a scene. The armed goblins were shocked to death when another human figure appeared without any sound. The man rested his body on the shoulders of one of the goblins while holding two short blades, his face looking bored and weary of the little goblins he had to kill. Sure enough, when all the green monsters were finally running angrily towards that figure, he jumped out of the way lightly. His slash was silent and as light as a feather, but the impact of his attack severed three goblin heads at once. His eyes wandered with pleasure at the sight of the panicked goblins, and ran low to finish off the remaining monsters with a wide grin. The battle was over in an instant. The floor flooded with blood due to the actions of Lee Sion. His two colleagues, previously tasked with baiting the goblins, praised the man's fighting skills, which were rewarded with arrogant stares and lazy speech. Lee Sion ordered one of the useless men named Lee Jin Hu to open the giant gate in front of them. The gate with the purplish glowing eye symbol was the last gate to the tower's boss floor. As Lee Jin Hu walked to open the gate, a red barrier appeared in front of him. He gasped and stepped back. 
A status window appeared, informing him that the boss battle would begin when one of the two teams remained. The men looked up to see a red cube barrier forming around them. When they still couldn't get a grip on the situation, they were surprised by the presence of another human squad. Sung Yoon and his two partners walked in with a relaxed and confident look. Lee Sion gave him an annoyed glance and didn't expect there to be any enemies other than the monsters in the tower. Sung Yoon gripped his sword and shield tightly, stood tall, and told his two partners that he would fight the three enemies alone with an unwavering tone. He whispered lowly to the woman beside him to give him the agility buff and leave the other various buffs to Sung Hoon. Hyeon glanced at the man and paused for a moment. Then with a sharp gaze, she warned Sung Hoon that fighting human hunters could be much more dangerous and frightening than fighting dungeon monsters. The man looked back at Hyeon and said he wouldn't push himself. Obeying Sung Yoon's request, Hyeon raised her staff and immediately applied the agility buff, the tip of her wand glowing greenish for a moment and spreading towards Sung Yoon quickly around his body. Sung Yoon advanced alone with long, steady strides, knowing he could fight off the hunters without any problems as he knew his skills had improved tremendously. The three hunters were on standby and set up a stance, ready to attack. Sung Yoon ran towards them quickly yet confidently while tightening his jaw and grip on his weapon. Sung Yoon sped up and left a trail of dust flying around him. His self-assurance seemed to ooze out, making Lee Sion staring at him feel the pressure of an aura that sent chills down his spine for a moment. The man immediately retreated to the back and ordered Lee Jin Ho to block Sung Yoon's attack with his shield with all his might. The poor man who was called couldn't evade and immediately unleashed his open shield skill. A triangular yellowish glowing barrier appeared around them and looked so solid that it gripped the ground. Sung Yoon jumped up while shouting at the barrier. He raised his weapon high and concentrated his power on his sword. The sword clashed hard with Lee Jin Ho's barrier. Sung Yoon darted down quickly. His sword sliced through the barrier with ease and caused a cracking sound accompanied by the appearance of a large crack that eventually destroyed the shield so quickly. The pressure from Sung Yoon's attack spread into the barrier, causing the three hunters inside to be knocked back hard. Sung Yoon did not stand idly by. As soon as his feet were perfectly settled on the ground, he sprinted forward, nimbly taking advantage of the enemy's shock to cut them down one by one without pause and soaring with powerful and precise strikes. Hyun and Sung Hoon were so surprised by Sung Yoon's attack speed, that boy glanced at Lee Sion, knowing that Lee Sion was the most potent opponent among his three foes. Lee Sion looked back at Sung Yoon with eyes that trembled in panic. In the end, they faced off one-on-one. -on -one. Han Sung Yoon delivered merciless slashes while inching forward, while Lee Sion continued to make defensive moves using his two daggers. A sword fight was inevitable, the clashing of the two powerful irons causing sparks to fly between them. Sung Yoon felt odd. He had attacked at full speed and was confident in his abilities. But the man in front of him always managed to parry his sword slash without a scratch, despite the panicked look on his face. Sung Yoon immediately decided to change the direction of his strike and use more force. He dodged and changed the angle of his feet and spun around until he was right behind Lee Sion, quickly bringing his sword down with force and feeling confident that it would be his last strike to win the fight. But to Sung Yoon's surprise, the man blocked his attack by spinning his dagger blade backward even with a minimal angle of view, while jumping to dodge forward. Sung Yoon widened his eyes in disbelief. He now understood why his attack could not hit the man earlier. He took a deep dive into the reddish glowing pupils when their eyes locked. He realized that those were the eyes that could see the direction of his sword strike. Lee Sion put some distance between him and Sung Yoon, but before he could react, a shield shot toward him, making him lose sight momentarily. The shield was thrown by Sung Yoon as part of his battle strategy after he recognized Lee Sion's eye advantage. Just as the shield was no longer obstructing Lee Sion's vision, there was Han Sung Yoon as a jump scare for him. The man's eyes flashed blue, and he immediately thrust his sword into Lee Sion's heart.
The red-eyed man could no longer dodge as he cursed Sung Yoon loudly as his final form of attack. With Lee Sion dead, Han Sung Yoon got the extra reward for defeating the other remaining teams. For a moment, Sung Yoon and his two colleagues were silent as they looked at the three lifeless humans. Hyun realized something. She glanced at Sung Yoon. The man gripped his weapon so tightly that his fingers turned white. The grip was firm but trembling slowly. She bluntly asked if he was okay. Sung Yoon replied with a light and dry tone, his gaze blank momentarily, and he said he was fine. But Hayon understood the man was feeling the emotional shock of killing a human being. But that blank stare quickly disappeared. Sung Yoon wanted to immediately continue their mission by killing the boss on the tower floor and was quickly agreed by his two colleagues. Killing the boss goblin was no longer a problematic challenge for Han Sung Yoon. The King Goblin, who was so five times the size of a man's body that he could easily defeat it single-handedly by stabbing the vital point on its back neck. In a matter of minutes, the giant simply fell. Sung Yoon was rewarded with increased stats and an additional instant accelerator skill for his achievement. They were immediately teleported to the lobby before resting in their respective rooms. Hyun and Sung Yoon faced off momentarily the man bidding farewell to the woman before him. Hayon stares at him for a moment as if to say something. Then in the end, she gives Sung Yoon a sentence of support, that he does not need to feel guilty if he does something right, including if he has to kill another man. Sung Yoon was quite surprised to hear Hayon's words. For a moment, his heart felt relieved, as if a little burden was lifted along with the anxiety that had been lodged, making his breathing feel tight. Suddenly, Hayon seemed to be pressing an option in the status window that Sung Yoon couldn't see. Apparently, she was sending him a friend request. Hayon waltzed off after sending the friend request. She gave Sung Yoon a slight smile, asking him to look for her later at the White Silver Guild when they returned to Earth. Her gaze was sincere and warm. Sung Yoon did not reply to her words. He just fell silent and stared at the woman's departure from the portal. Now that he was alone, Suddenly his eyes refocused. He looked to the right. A mist of souls was flying there. One of the reasons why he still felt uneasy was that he did not know whether he should absorb a human soul. Lee Sion's soul was glowing red and bright right above his chest. He pursed his lips tightly. He knew he could not be reckless. He feared the possibility that if he crossed the boundary of humanity, he would continue to kill humans for the personal satisfaction of his thirst for power from the human soul. But the man had strengthened his resolve, and he absorbed Lee Sion's soul, the wisp of spirit glowing blackish, like an electric lightning bolt that spread through the air and spun rapidly like a powerful whirlwind in Sung Yoon's hand. After absorbing that soul, he passed through the lobby portal to his room. The system window activated suddenly, giving a system update notice, where each challenger would get a ranking determined by the system tower. Sung Yoon was asked to enter an alias that would appear to other challengers. The man thought for a moment, then joined the name Hunter as his alias. A rank board showed the temporary ranking on the fourth trial floor. He looked at it for a moment and scrolled through the screen before him, trying to find his current rank. He was surprised that he was ranked 16th with a rank of A-. His ranking was higher than he thought it actually was. Another status window popped up, explaining that the top 50 challengers would get the title Pioneer, and an advantage later on the 8th floor, where if one could maintain their Pioneer title, they would get a privilege called Halo. Sung Yoon looked at the notice with a curious twinkle in his eye. He thought that the privilege was an additional skill, but did not try to care at the moment. He was focused on absorbing the four strongest souls in the fourth floor tower. Three human souls and one goblin king spirit quickly entered his body, swirling like a black hole vortex in his chest. He felt an incredible surge of power for a moment. Now his aura was more powerful and gripping than before he absorbed the human lives. With the man's points, he also bought a return stone that could make him return to Earth for three days. He aims to try and bring his equipment back to Earth. As Sung Yoon held the stone firmly, red light quickly surrounded him. He smiled, knowing that he would soon be deported to Earth in just a moment. Suddenly the ground he was on changed, 
and a hole appeared that grew larger and larger, like a sand pit in the Sahara Desert. He was sucked down there quickly and without any preparation. When he woke up and opened his eyes, it appeared that Sung Yoon had returned to Earth. He woke up in his usual bedroom bed. He quickly got up and looked around. He was familiar with the room. It was confirmed that the man had been returned to Earth using the return stone. When he got up from his bed to wash, he was surprised to find the sword and shield he used in the tower lying there. He smiled happily. Apparently, his attempt to bring items from inside the tower was successful, but he was pretty uneasy knowing that fact. If he could get his items, then the tower challengers with higher ranks than him could also bring their weapons to Earth. He was worried that the price of items for hunters on Earth would drop dramatically, so he wanted to immediately sell weapons from the tower at a high price. Before that, he would have to qualify as a hunter to sell the item. With an idea in his brain, he picked up his red smartphone and planned to do something as soon as possible. Elsewhere on Earth, more precisely in the Hunter Training Academy, the cell phone belonging to the White Lotus Training Center director, Huang Mao, rang, and the middle-aged man immediately picked it up. He was surprised when he heard the voice on the other side of the phone was Han Sung Yoon, the untalented man he had expelled. He lazily answered the phone and thought Sung Yoon was trying to ask for a refund of the money he had talked to him about on that rainy night. But he was completely wrong. The loser kept mouthing off about asking the director to help him apply for the hunter exam. His eyebrows twitched in annoyance at hearing that impossible request again, the look in his eyes so disgusted and reminiscent of how untalented Han Sung Yoon was. But the man who had returned from the tower had a plan. He offered to pay back the registration fee. Of course, due to the temptation of money, Huang Mao could not refuse Sung Yoon's request. Hearing that, the man behind the red phone grinned happily. Huang Mao had eaten the bait he had given. Sung Yoon quickly prepared to take the hunter's exam that day, considering he didn't have much time on Earth, and immediately headed for the Hunters Association building. As soon as he entered the front door of the building, he was greeted by Director Huang. But he no longer felt afraid of the man. Instead, he could look directly into his former coach's two eyes. A thin bearded man wearing a neat black suit named Kim Inhu, an inspector who would be grading the hunter's graduation exam, interrupted their conversation, coming over to greet Han Sung Yoon. He immediately directed his two guests to enter the exam room when there were no questions about the exam procedures from Han Sung Yoon. They arrive at a large room that looks like a fighting arena. Director Huang and Inspector in Hu were on the balcony judging and observing, while Sung Yoon stood tall in the center of the arena, holding a sword. Director Huang has been in coalition with Inspector in Hu, the cunning man asking for Sung Yoon to be thwarted as quickly as possible, and given the strongest and most difficult enemies for sword users. The conversation was short-lived. in Hu turned to Sung Yoon, asking the man to choose the difficulty level. Sung Yoon recalled his previous hunter tests, where he always chose the weakest difficulty and shamefully even lost to a goblin monster that was the lowest and most essential to defeat, making him a true loser. He wouldn't repeat that bad experience, so he chose the most challenging level in the exam with a firm and decisive speech. Sung Yoon's choice really surprised Director Huang, who thought that boy would prefer the lowest level like before. Sung Yoon leaned back, staring at the director with a mysterious smile that looked annoying as hell in Huang's eyes. The man stared back at him with a small curse of disbelief. The window system appears and the exam is about to begin. The monster that Sung Yoon will fight is a phoenix, a giant bird of fire with an extraordinary level of ferocity. The monster's screech rattled the eardrums and the lick of the huge flame tongue surrounding its body. Evidently, the monster's screech affected Sung Yoon. His system window warned that his movement would be reduced by 25% due to the effect of the monster's skill. Sung Yoon realized that his sword looked cracked. It was also the devious act of Huang, who had damaged Sung Yoon's weapon before the test began. With such a sly grin, the man was sure Sung Yoon would fail this exam. The phoenix flew low above Sung Yoon, flapping its fiery wings towards Sung Yoon, Flames dancing merrily around its body. 
Hot breezes filled the arena rapidly, the temperature rising dramatically. But Sung Yoon did not budge from his spot. He gazed at the bird monster quietly, his eyes flashing bluish and sharp. As Huang watched Sung Yoon from above, he was reminded of himself when he had just qualified as a hunter in his youth. He could easily hold the world in his two palms at that time. But over time, he realized that he did not have enough strength and talent, and eventually gave up on the barrier to become the strongest hunter. Therefore, he desperately wanted to make Sung Yoon realize that he must give up on something that Boy didn't have. But in the arena, Sung Yoon showed absolutely no intention of surrendering. The young man raised his sword high in front of the giant savage fire monster that was ready to devour him whenever it could. As the phoenix attacked Sung Yoon with its claws that were as big as a human arm, the man tried to hold it back with his sword, but due to director Huang's actions, the sword was broken into two quickly. Sung Yoon glanced at his broken sword but swiftly jumped back to avoid the phoenix's attack. He glanced disgustedly at director Huang, who laughed pettishly. He knew his former instructor must have planned something dirty like this. Suddenly, the bird monster flapped its wings backward as if trying to take to the air. Not even a second later, a hot fireball burst out of the bird's beak like a cannon. But Sung Yoon felt that this was the right time to test the skills he had obtained in the tower, immediately activating his instant acceleration skill. His feet rested firmly on the arena floor, and he jumped high to nimbly dodge the fireballs aimed at him. Because of his incredible speed and the limited arena, he decided to rest in the sky with a loud bang that followed him. He looked like a ravenous spider ready to target the tiny insects in front of him. The suddenness of the move surprised Phoenix. Sung Yoon felt proud of his new skill, which was valuable and vital. The Firebird launched its second attack quickly, but Sung Yoon nimbly glided straight at the monster without fear of fire. The man plunged his broken sword with all his might into the phoenix's bloodshot eyes before launching his fireball attack. The giant bird screeched in pain, its movements becoming uncontrollable as it tried to remove the sword from its eye. Sung Yoon rested on the arena floor, watching the monster momentarily and realizing his attack was not strong enough due to the broken sword being too short. He quickly grabbed one of the broken chunks of the floor, held it tightly, and raised it to shoulder height. He turned his body 90 degrees backward, then threw the chunk of cement with force as he ran, like throwing a spear in a prestigious Olympic event. It hit Phoenix squarely on the bird's head, splitting it in two as neatly as a sword blade. The javelin went through the balcony railing and struck the wall behind Inspector Inho and Director Huang, who were so shocked that their eyes widened. The Phoenix bird fell with a loud thud and drooped lifelessly. Sung Yoon turned towards the two middle-aged men who had watched his fight casually and looked at them with a faint smile, feeling proud to have proven himself in front of the sneaky director. Sung Yoon successfully passed the test and got his hunter's identification card. Although he had defeated a monster with a high difficulty level, he was ranked C as a hunter. But he doesn't care. Right now, the most important thing is that he can sell items from the tower he planned. In another separate room, Director Huang was furious with Inspector Inhu. He pounded on the table and demanded an explanation as to why Sung Yoon was able to fight a monster whose difficulty level the man should not have been able to complete. Inhu couldn't do much. He had already tried to lower Sung Yoon's ranking, and there was no way he couldn't pass him with a fighting performance like the one they had witnessed earlier. Suddenly, Sung Yoon entered the room and interrupted the conversation of the two middle-aged men. Sung Yoon walked with a long, steady stride towards Huang, looked at him with a triumphant gaze, then with a witty tone that had a hint of seriousness in it, he turned around to mock the director as a failed director. That remark broke Huang's patience. His face hardened, and looking at Sung Yoon in displeasure, he immediately stood up and launched an angry fist at Sung Yoon. The man who had now officially become a hunter smiled on the corner of his lips and easily dodged Huang's fist, ducking with a low and long stance, then countered the fist right in the middle-aged man's solar plexus hard and without restraint. Then he whispered softly that his attack was merely an attempt at self-defense 
and continued to slap the director with all his might while putting on a very calm face and saying lightly that his slap was a counterattack. Huang was knocked back with a bruised cheek and blood spurting from his mouth. At that moment, he couldn't believe that Sung Yun had become that strong. The sun had set when Sung Yun said goodbye to instructor In Hu. The man in the black suit offered Sung Yun to become the exclusive hunter for the Hunter Association for a considerable fee. But Han Sung Yun sharply said that he knew the instructor had manipulated the difficulty of the hunter test he passed earlier. Of course, it surprised In Hu, and his face turned pale. Sung Yun then firmly said that he didn't want to work with someone so dishonest and untrustworthy, threw down the business card he was given, and walked away. Two days later, rumors about the Tower of Trials phenomenon had spread everywhere. Sung Yun, who had known about the possibility of it happening, had finished executing his plan. He sold the items he got at a pretty good price. The tower system suddenly appeared, warning that his time was up on Earth, and he was ready to return to the Tower of Trials. Once again, purple light surrounded him quickly. His body seemed to float for a moment, and he teleported back into the tower with a witty grin as if he was ready to have fun back there. Sung Yun teleported quickly into the tower as the purple glow faded. He sat on the bed in his room inside the tower. He stared at the item that had helped him return to Earth and placed it back into his inventory. Sung Yun stretched his body vigorously. He wanted to continue the challenge on the next floor in top condition. At once, the system window appeared abruptly in front of him. He got a new skill named Eyes of Truth because he was the first person to return to Earth from the Tower of Trials. He was surprised when he felt a change in the retina of his shiny eyes. The skill allows the user to see the details of any object and know the truth of someone's words to him. As the name suggests, this skill penetrates the souls of the living and the dead to their core. His lips twitched with delight. This skill was an unexpected stroke of luck for him. Sung Yoon opened the window store and bought himself some new, higher-level weaponry. He had no problem buying expensive swords and shields as long as the effects of the weapons were worth the points he spent. Like the Thunder Sword, he just tried swinging. It has the ability to petrify his enemies. With his new weapon, Sung Yoon headed for the fifth floor trial. He immediately ran as soon as the giant portal appeared before him. The trial this time was themed Hunt, with a time limit of one day. He must defeat the boss wolf person. As a completion reward, he will get the wolf person's headband and vice versa. And as usual, death is the price for failing to complete the mission. Sung Yun stood before a sharp rocky mountain that was shaped like a wolf's head at its peak. He gripped his new sword with aplomb, even though when he looked up, dozens of hungry savage wolves had targeted him for dinner. Droves of abnormally sized wolves ambushed Sung Yun together. Unexpectedly, Sung Yoon no longer dodged the attack. He cut down the beasts one by one quickly while running forward. Even with his current strength, he could easily give the wolf a free kick without any resistance and fell backward. He was pretty surprised by his opponent, who was too weak for him. The wolf, knocked down by Sung Yoon's kick, fell and crashed into something behind him. The man was quite surprised to see what was in front of his eyes. As he realized... There stood his actual opponent. White wolves ten times the size of wolves in Middle-earth stared at him with a displeased look and threatening sharp fangs. One of the wolves howled loudly before finally eating the poor little wolf who was helpless in front of him, as if trying to recharge his body. Now, Sung Yoon was surrounded by the giant wolf monsters. Instead of being frightened, Sung Yoon grinned happily his eyes leering to channel the adrenaline to signal that he accepted the challenge from the fifth floor tower. The wolf monster crept forward quickly towards Sung Yoon with drool dripping. That man did not stay silent. He jumped ahead to avoid the monster's bite. He leaped with a steady footstool between the bodies of the giant wolves while swinging his sword, making a deep cut, and then repeating the same attack on each monster by rotating his sword at certain angles quickly and unpredictably movement. Thanks to his attack, he gained an increase in the hunter dagger skill and landed in a perfect kneeling position on the ground. However, the wolf monsters did not give up entirely. The remaining tried to attack Sung Yoon angrily. Sung Yoon pointed his weapon out without hesitation. 
Ultimately, he defeated all the wolf monsters. The beasts' corpses lay on the ground with their soul cores floating in the air, ready to be absorbed by Sung Yun. Without waiting long, the man raised one of his hands to activate his necromancer skill. The monster's spirit had quickly been absorbed easily and increased his necromancer skill. He continued, shocked by the dozens of wolf corpses horribly torn apart along the stone hillside passageway. He knelt down briefly to examine one of the wolf corpses and realized from the blood and scars that the monster had not been killed long ago and was caused by a sword slash. He turned his head to the right and saw a sword slash mark on one of the rocks. He immediately activated the eyes of the truth skill on the stone. The status window opened, showing the results of his vision. It turned out that the slash came from a trace of a powerful aura strike that caused a slash mark like a sword strike. Sung Yun paused momentarily, thinking about how powerful the skill could cause such chaos as the scene he was currently seeing. Before he could think about the mystery, a loud howl suddenly sounded deafening. He realized that something was trying to get closer to him. He immediately darted towards the source of the sound, which seemed to be at the end of a rock cave. Unexpectedly, a monster had fallen repeatedly with a loud bang from inside with severe injuries. Of course, Sung Yoon was shocked, especially when he saw the status window that came out, giving information that the wolf person he was supposed to fight had died. Han Sung Yoon stood watchfully in front of the horribly dead monster. When he turned his head quickly, the status window analyzed the wolf person's death. An intruder had been detected in his trial. Instantly, the trial's purpose in completing the fifth floor tower changed. He had to kill whoever the interdimensional intruder was on that floor. From inside the cave, a burly figure appeared wearing complete armor that covered his entire body, including his face. The figure held a large sword with a deadly aura. Sung Yoon was stunned to find an intruder in the tower. There, he realized that the Tower of Trial might have many forms in other dimensions. Before he knew it, the intruder was talking to him, asking for Sung Yoon's identity, and then pointing a long weapon at him with eyes like a raging fire. Sung Yoon grinned nervously. He knew his opponent was not an ordinary opponent this time. He raised his sword and prepared for a defensive stance. Who is the intruder in full armor? Can Sung Yoon defeat the intruder? Let's look forward to the next part. If you like the video, please press the subscribe button for more video like this. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.